Good morning. I'm Muriel Bowser, and we are here at the beautiful Benjamin Banner Academic High School in Washington, D.C. Uh, I want to thank uh, Principal Berger, who is right here in the front, uh, for her excellent leadership of this high school and the children here, uh, getting them on their ways to college um, to college. That's where kids from here, they go to college. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, that we've been joined by uh, Council Member David Grasso, who is the Council Chair of the Education Committee. Thank you, Council Member, for being here. <laughs> and also, I would like to acknowledge our presenters today, uh, Deputy Mayor for Education, Jenny Niles, The Chancellor of Schools, Kaya Henderson. The State uh, Superintendent of Education, Hansel Kang. And also for the Public Charter School Board in Scott um, Pearsonstead is the Deputy Executive Director, Naomi DeVoe. Naomi. Uh, and also, we are joined by two state board members, uh, Mary Lord at large and Jack Jacobson, the chairman of the State Board of Education. Thank you for being here. And I think I've acknowledged. And Ruth, where is Ruth? Hi, Ruth. There is Ruth Wattenberg, and Ruth is the Ward 3 representative on the state board. Um, so thank you for being here. So today um, we are going to announce the district-wide results of the 2015 and 2016 Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Career, also known as the PARC exam. Uh, last, when were we talking about this last? Was it? Last December, uh, we talked to you about the district's first um, results um, from the exam that we just embarked on. Uh, I also want to, uh, in addition to uh, acknowledging Principal Berger and the excellence um, that she inspires here at Banneker, uh, I'm also here, we chose to be at Banneker for the very excellent work that the principal and staff have done here uh, with the students at Banneker in preparing them uh, to take the park test. Um, because of that diligent preparation, Banneker students saw double digit gains, double digit gains, and we're very proud of that. And we think uh, that the Banneker example is one that can be emulated. So congratulations, Principal. Uh, you will hear more from the Chancellor and from the Public St Charter School Board uh, directly about specific results. And our education leaders before us uh, will answer your specific questions. Um, and so I'm proud to announce that we have seen increases in park scores for students uh, with disabilities, English language learners, economically disadvantaged groups, black and Hispanic students. Uh, Superintendent Kang will go deeper into these specific results, um, but I am thrilled that we have made these gains in the second year that our students are taking part, and these gains are promising, but in no way um, are they sufficient, and so we know that we're going to work, uh, continue to work hard to make sure all of our students are, are achieving. The district owes uh, it to our young people uh, to set them up for success. Um, as, as some of these scores will indicate. Um, some will say, uh, some of the data suggests um, that we have to do more and do it faster. As a city, we will not be satisfied until all of our students are making the remarkable gains um, that the scores demonstrate have been made here at Banneker and at KIPP. We will continue to push harder. Uh, so with that, I would like to acknowledge for uh, brief remarks the chairman of the Council's Committee on Education, David Grosso. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, and uh, uh, good morning, everybody. I am uh, Council Member David Grosso, and I'm here today to really uh, demonstrate my support for continuing the work that we're doing when it comes to these tests and to the, to the work that we're doing in our schools, and to congratulate the schools that have done such an incredible job by 
taken advantage of this data over the last year, six, eight months as it is, uh, to better the efforts in their own schools and also to uh, have the results come out the way that they have. Uh, as the mayor noted, we, see, we have seen good improvement over throughout the whole city. We've seen great improvement in many of the school buildings in the District of Columbia, both traditional and DCPS, and I think this is a tribute to the teachers, the principals, the administrators, and everyone that's in the schools who have taken this testing seriously, understand the implications of how we measure uh, in the long run for all of our students to achieve greatness. So um, this is something that I'm proud to be a part of and to continue to support. Uh, I want to also call out Raymond Education Campus. I was there just the other day and um, the work that's being done there is remarkable from pre-K through eight um, in, a, in a really, I think, uh, interesting, wonderful neighborhood setting that I think we can all be very proud of the work being done there. So congratulations uh, on your results as well. Um, finally, I'll just note that uh, this is uh, just year two of this effort, and it's something that I think we all need to be committed to uh, for the long run. You can't um, just uh, think, oh, well, now we know year two's results, and that's going to give us a definitive indication of where we're going in our city. It does give us some indication, and it is something that I think we can work on and build on, but over the long run, work like this takes three years, five years of work in order to get the data that we need to really move forward. So I'm hopeful that all of our schools, both traditional and charter schools, will embrace this uh, data that we're getting from these results, uh, take that back to the classroom, and make sure that as we move forward in the park testing, we can see greater and greater improvement over the years. Thank you all very much. So the speakers um, will follow. Um, I realized that I didn't, the, the, our host principal did not greet everybody. So I'm going to ask her to do that. Uh, and she will be followed by Jenny Niles, Hansel Kane, Kaya Henderson, uh, and Ms. DeVoe. Principal. I thought I had escaped this part of it, but, but thank you. And actually, I was supposed to introduce our mayor, and I'm just so proud to stand in front of you. I'm proud to say, you know, I am the proud principal of Benjamin Banneker Academic High School, where we work hard, we've set some standards, and, and the standards are working, and I have the best staff. And I'm going to say, I have the best job in the city, so I know the champion is going to say. No, you don't. I do. But I think I do, because I have... Phenomenal people here, students, family, parents, teachers, staff that, are, you know, we work hard and obviously hard work pays off. So, you know, just to tell you a little bit about Banneker, we are one of the uh, District of Columbia's premier high schools and college prep school serving students from all over the city. We're not just here in this war, but from all over the city. And so we are proud to see them accomplish these goals. Um, and I believe it is because of our high standards that we, we uh, you know, continue to move. You know, we, we have some outstanding AP scores as well. And, you know, we offer everything from AP to Latin here. And so, you know, it's a great day at Banneker. It's a great day at Banneker. I welcome all of you. And I am thankful to, to stand before you. And I'm really thankful for the data. And I can't wait until it becomes public because... <laughs> It's hard holding good news, but again, thank you so much, and welcome, and welcome to all of our guests here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Let me acknowledge my wonderful boss, Mayor Bowser, Councilmember Grasso, Chancellor Henderson, Superintendent Kang, um, and our members of the Deputy Director, Naomi DeVoe, and Don Soifer, one of our public charter school board members, um, as well as the other leaders assembled, and thank you to the State Board of Ed members. Since I have the podium, one of my former students is actually in the room, so I just have to give a shout out because it's really, um, I always feel pride when one of my students is in the room. Uh, but I'd like to give a special thank you to Principal Berger, not only for welcoming us here today, but as has been mentioned, the scores that we're going to share for Banneker are just outstanding, both because of the growth and the absolute amount of um, achievement that they um, have received. And it just demonstrates that all of our kids, no matter where they come from, can um, reach high levels of outstanding academic achievement. Um, 
And I want to um, mention two things before I ask Superintendent Kane to come up and go over the numbers specifically. Um, the mayor referred to this earlier, but we are releasing scores much, much earlier than we ever have before. And so this is a huge benefit, not only to, um, to our students and families, but to our teachers. Because what our teachers want to know is who is sitting in front of me and what do they know and what don't they know. And so first of all, I really want to um, uh, applaud Aussie for doing the hard work of getting these scores done and getting them done now. And then the other thing that, um, that ASI has done really well is you will see um, parents will receiving score reports in September. And these score reports are improved so that they're easier to read, easier to access. And then, equally as exciting, there are tools on the web for teachers to be able to look at how their students did um, and look at that now right as they're getting into the beginning of the year. So I just wanted to um, acknowledge both of those sort of process improvements that's going to make a, um, a big difference. Um, and I'm very excited um, that we do have these increase, the two percentage points statewide in reading, the three percentage points statewide in math. Um, you'll hear more about both sectors, which also increased. Um, and while this is definitely good news, uh, we are very far from where we need to get to. We do not have all of our kids yet, college and career ready, and every one of our students can get there and deserves to get there. And so that's what we're committed to. So I want to ask Superintendent Kang to come up and give us more specifics about the results. Thank you very much, Mayor Bowser and Deputy Mayor Niles. Um, I'm glad to be here today to share with you the statewide results for the Partnership for the Assessment of Readiness for College and Career from 2016. Um, so my name is Hansula Kang. I'm the State Superintendent of Education, and today we will be sharing. I will be sharing the statewide results for DC, which include the results of both DCPS and the public charter schools. PARC is an important assessment because it measures the real-world skills that our students need to succeed in both college and career, and provides us the information that we all need to better support our students and to challenge them. This year, uh, in 2015-16, 99% of DC students took the PARC assessment online, which is up from 92% in the first year. When I say that PARC uh, asks our students to use critical thinking and, and use skills that are needed in the real world, this is an example of what I'm talking about. So on the left side, you can see a sixth grade math question from the, the PARC assessment and from DC CAS. And you can see that while they ask students to use a similar underlying standard to demonstrate their understanding of how to divide fractions, the CAS question is quite simple. Students simply need to solve the problem and then select the correct answer. On PARC, students are actually asked to look at two different ways that you could solve the problem, one through a diagram and one through a written expression, and describe how they relate to each other and explain how they are connected. Um, so in order to do well on the park question, you have to show a much deeper understanding of fractions, of division, and how to really um, demonstrate how to solve this complex problem in a much deeper way. Um, so now getting into the statewide results, as the mayor and deputy mayor mentioned, uh, we have some key takeaways here. Our scores are up from 2015, which is great to see, and they are up in almost all grades and subjects. We are particularly excited to see especially strong results in early grades math for the second year in a row. We think that is particularly encouraging for the future. We also see that the results of specific groups of students have improved, as the mayor mentioned. And finally, we have lots of information that we're making available to parents and educators and the public uh, so that we can all think about how we better support our students in achieving these high standards in the future. So on PARC, we have five different performance levels, ranging from level one, did not yet meet expectations, through level five, exceeded expectations. And levels four and five here indicate students who are on track for the next grade level and on track to graduate high school ready for college and careers. So in the coming slides, you'll see us mostly refer to the percentage of students scoring on track, uh, which is the percentage of students at the levels four and five. Um, and we are particularly excited that early research is showing that PARC is living up to its promise. It actually is predictive of how students will do in the first year of college coursework. And there's some early research from the state of Massachusetts that shows that. So again, as the deputy mayor mentioned, when we look at our overall results across all grade levels, the percentage of students scoring at the college and career ready level has increased by two points in English language arts or ELA and by three points in math across DC. 
in the ELA results by test, you can see that results are up across almost all tests. We're also encouraged that in English language arts, in most cases, we see the percentage of students in the level one category, the lowest category, has decreased. So students are progressing out of that lowest category that is farthest from the bar we are setting. You can also see that our results uh, ranged from a gain of one point to a gain of four points in eighth grade. And the only place where results declined was in high school you know, on the English 2 assessment. In math, we also see similarly that results improved on nearly every test. The reason you see some additional boxes here for the math test is we have some students who are in seventh and eighth grade um, who are enrolled in Algebra 1 uh, and so may have been taking the Algebra 1 assessment instead of their seventh or eighth grade math test. We also have some students who took the geometry assessment last year while they were still in middle school and so are taking the Algebra 2 assessment this year as their required test. Um, so we have some different options in mathematics. When we look at the results by grade for mathematics, we see, as I mentioned, particularly strong results in early grades for the second year in a row. So last year we were excited to see that our results for third, fourth, and fifth graders were higher than those for later grades. This year we see particularly strong gains in those years. So we see a seven point gain for our third graders, four point gain for our fourth graders, and a five point gain for our fifth graders. And this makes us particularly optimistic for the future. Moving into the middle grades, we then see um, for all students enrolled in seventh grade, a three point gain, and our eighth graders holding flat or slightly ticking down, our high school results moving up by four points. And here the solid bar shows the students who took uh, the seventh or eighth grade math test, and the shaded portion shows those students who took other tests. Finally, as the mayor mentioned, we were particularly excited to see the results for specific groups of students also increase. For our black and Hispanic students, our students in special education, English language learners, economically disadvantaged students, and at-risk students. In English language arts, the results for specific groups of students in almost all categories increased. Similarly, in math, we actually saw increases across every subgroup, every specific group of students. And finally, when it comes to participation rate, which is a federal requirement, DC met or exceeded our 95% participation rate target for both ELA and math at the overall levels. When we look at specific grades, we met or exceeded our target in most grades. The exception was in high school where we did not, but our participation rates did improve from the previous year. So we know we have more work to do here, but we also know that the switch from a grade-based to a course-based high school test has meant we need to revisit our business rules for calculating participation rate as well. And finally, on resources and supports. As both the mayor and deputy mayor have mentioned, we are excited by the progress that has happened, but we know we have much more work to do to support all of our students. And so the resources, data, and information that OSI is providing, as well as the important steps that educators and parents will take using this data, are what is key towards further improvement in the future. So we have made improvements to our public-facing website, results.ossie.dc.gov, and there are links to that from Aussie's homepage, um, which shows the data in easy-to-read visual displays. So on the left, you can see a year-over-year -year look at results that is available at the state, LEA, and school level. And on the right, what you see is we provide not only the overall results, but how students did on different portions of the test in a look that we think will be especially valuable to educators. So for example, a fourth grade team at a school could pull up their school's results on the English language arts assessment, not only the overall results, but how their students did on literary text or fiction versus nonfiction or informational text on the writing sections as opposed to the reading sections, and can look at those results compared with the results in other LEAs and across the state. Um, and we think that will provide really helpful information for our educators. In addition, we have score reports for families with their individual child's results, which will be sent home in September. And again, these score reports provide their child's overall score, but also how their child did on different portions of the assessment and how their performance compared to other children in DC at their school and across the district, as well as their own performance the previous year. So we're excited for families to get this information and be able to use it to ask questions of their teacher and better support their children. 
And finally, there are additional materials that are live on our website immediately following this event, um, including downloadable spreadsheets with LEA and school level results, as well as state and sector, subject specific spreadsheets, a score report guide and FAQs for families um, in English as well as in translated languages, um, and access to 2015 released test items. Last year, the Park Consortium released the equivalent of a full length test in each grade and subject. Um, and these test items provide great resources, both instructional resources and materials for teachers to use in the classroom and a great picture for parents who are seeking to better understand this new level that our, our students are being asked to meet. Um, so we're excited that all of these resources are available on our website. So before I turn it over to my colleagues, I'll just close by noting that this past school year, I had the chance to visit more than 50 schools across the district, both DCPS and public charter schools. And in my visits, spending time in classrooms, it was remarkable to see the progress we have made over the last five years, not just in our data, but in what we see and feel in our classrooms and what our teachers and students are aiming for. In our English language arts classrooms, I see our students reading real texts and learning to discuss them, seeing the ways in which authors are using literary devices to make meaning of the text. We see in our math classrooms students tackling new and challenging problems with fearlessness, learning how to try different approaches, talk to their colleagues, and figure out how to take on something totally new. It is deeply exciting to see the progress that's happening, and again, to feel it, as well as to see it in our data. So with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Chancellor Kaya Henderson. Good morning. I'm happy to uh, share DCPS's 2016 park results with you. Um, at DCPS, we have a lot of really good news. Um, but as usual, I'm also going to be very candid about places where um, we have significant room for improvement. So with that, overall, uh, we saw increases in both reading and math for 2016, which we think is positive. Um, our math scores increased by three points. Our English language arts scores increased by 0.6 uh, points. And that's the high level data. Um, but I don't think that these results paint the fullest picture of how our students perform. So let's take a little bit of a deeper look. On a grade by grade basis, uh, we saw some really nice increases across grades three through eight in English language arts. Looking at just those grades, DCPS showed an overall 2% improvement in student performance over last year. And our middle grades, let me say that again, our middle grades, Mayor, particularly fifth, sixth, and eighth grades saw the greatest increases. However, you can clap for that. <laughs> um, however, as you can see from, from this slide, there were some pretty significant reductions at the high school level in English language arts. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. In math, our improvement was even more promising. Students at every single grade level showed improvement in math. We saw particularly strong gains in the third grade and in the fifth grade. Of course, district-wide results can't capture all of the remarkable improvements that we're seeing in our individual schools. Um, first of all, half, 50, a significant 50, percent of our schools saw gains in both English language arts and math, and that's huge news for us. Um, there were a number of schools that also showed tremendous individual gains, um, Banneker High School being one, of course, uh, Marie Reed Elementary School, Hearst, Beers, and Burroughs all saw double-digit gains in reading and math. Um, I'm particularly excited to celebrate Raymond Elementary School, whose principal uh, is here with us today. Raymond, as you know, is our first extended year school, and they had outsized gains in reading, which portends well for the 11 or the 10 other schools uh, that we switched to an extended year schedule. And while I'm very, very pleased with the progress that we've made, I'm not satisfied with our current performance. I take two important messages away from this data. Um, the first is that um, what we're doing is taking schools in the right direction. Um, our investments in human capital, our investments in curriculum and extending the school year um, and engaging parents and families is producing positive results. Um, but we also have a lot of work left to do. After decades of languishing, we're not going to fix DCPS in 
uh, in just a few years. And we've had lots of other indicators that show us that even though these aren't the largest gains in the world, um, we have enrollment increases, we have uh, graduation rate increases, we have other indicators of improvements in student performance, but we have to continue to accelerate this work over the next couple of years. I think our subgroup story is a really positive story to tell, with one small exception. Um, most of our subgroups saw nice improvements in English language arts. Our black students, our English language learners, our low-income students, our special education students, our Hispanic students all saw gains in English language arts and math. Um, that means that everybody uh, who is usually trailing behind is actually moving up. Of course, the other thing that stands out on this slide is that our white students' performance in English language arts fell. And that points to one of the significant challenges we face going forward. One of the other really, thing, really exciting things that I'm proud of is our 40 lowest performing schools actually improved at a faster rate than the district average. And if we're going to close the cap, gap with our lowest performing schools, they've got to grow at a quicker rate. So we take that as positive. On the math front, students in every subgroup, black, Hispanic, white, special ed, English language learners, low income students, at risk students, everybody saw gains. Um, and that tells me that students across the city and across demographic groups in every single ward are going in the right direction. Now, the high school story, which is a little more complicated than the rest. Um, most of our high school students who took 10th grade tests perform very well. And I wanna, again, single out Banneker, whose, uh, whose college and career ready rates rose by 30 points in math and 24 points in English language arts. Good morning, family. Um, while the increases were more modest at some of our neighborhood schools, I'm gonna let her do her thing. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, although the increases were more modest at some of our neighborhood schools, we are really excited to see increases at Roosevelt High School, at H.D. Woodson High School, at Ballou, and at Cardozo. Um, not all of our improvements are yet showing in our college and career readiness rates, but our results clearly show that these schools are moving in the right direction. On the other hand, there are a few schools that stand out as anomalies. School Without Walls lost quite a bit of ground on English language arts and math, and Wilson and Ellington saw some pretty deep reductions in English language arts. We've looked at the data and we've talked to folks at schools and we're confident that these results don't actually reflect the loss of student learning at these schools. Again, we have other indicators, AP tests and other exams that tell us that our students are still on track. But what we saw this year, different from past years, was that <clears throat> there were a number of adult issues that precluded students from putting their best foot forward on our exams. Um, so as uh, Superintendent Kang mentioned, we had to switch this year from grade-based to course-based rules around who takes the test. And that actually provided us with a lot of confusion both schools and DCPS around who should be taking the test. We try to ensure that kids are taking the test for the course that they are in and not a course that they've taken previously. And we had hundreds of kids this year who took courses for, uh, took exams for courses that they were not in. Uh, we also saw that um, our parents didn't have a clear understanding of the importance of the park exam. And we had some of our parents who were encouraging their students not to take the park in some cases because we had poor scheduling issues. We had the park that happened at the same time as the AP exam and parents, you know, rightly so in some cases, prioritized the AP exam. But what we have to do a better job of helping our parents understand is that the park is as important as the AP exam. The AP exam or the SAT might get you into college, but the park will tell you whether or not your kids are going to need to take remedial courses when they get to college. And that is worth the diploma that you're getting. That's the obligation that we have to our young people. And so our parents should want to know where kids are on their park scores. 
Um, we also need to help people understand uh, that uh, we had a no stakes attached rule this year. We knew that in the first couple of years of the park there would be noise, there would be issues, and we didn't want our teachers or our principals to bear the brunt of us working out the kinks of this new exam. And so, while I'm glad that we were able to do that, um, I also know that what gets measured gets done. And so, um, as we move into this next school year or this school year, um, there will be stakes to attach, attach to the park, and so we expect a greater focus on the park. Um, so a, I think a combination of some clunky testing policies and some uh, a lack of importance around the park made some of our young people not perform at the level that uh, they could have performed. So in conclusion, again, uh, our, our overall student performance is up in math and English language arts with strong performance against all of our demographic groups at, at schools all across the city. However, we saw declines in English language arts performance at some of our high demand high, high schools among our white students. And we'll fix that. I'm super confident that the challenges that we face this year, we're putting systems in place to ensure that they don't happen next year and that way our kids can show what they know. Um, so, as I said before, I think DCPS is on the right track. The investments that the mayor and the council have made in supporting us teaching very differently than we've ever taught before are helping our students. And I think it takes a lot of time to move a district of right, uh, a large district of right, um, but we're going to continue to celebrate our progress and we're going to continue to push harder so that we get to the point where all of our students are meeting the level four and level five college and career readiness standards because that's what we owe them as an excellent public school system. Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to welcome up our colleagues from the Public Charter School Board, Deputy Director Naomi DeVoe and Vice Chairman of the Board, Don Swifer. Um, it is a real pleasure to be here today. Um, I am the Deputy Director of the Public Charter School Board, the authorizer of the charter schools in Washington, D.C. Um, and this year marks the 20th year that D.C.'s citywide public charter schools have provided quality education options for students in Washington, D.C. And I am pleased to be here today to celebrate these citywide schools with the results from the, 2000, or the 2016 park assessment. Oh, yeah. Um, Twenty-nine percent of the students att attending public charter schools met or exceeded college expectations, meaning they scored a four or a five on the park assessment. In English, and 26 percent met or exceeded college expectations in math. More than 14,000 students in charter schools took the park assessment this year. This, the vast majority, over 90%, are students of color. 82% of these students were eligible for free or reduced price lunch, and 19% are students who received special education services. This year, 8% received English language instruction because English was not the student's home language. These schools reflect the multicultural diversity of the city. And since the inception of the statewide assessments, public charter schools have performed at or better than the citywide average, and this trend continues. This slide compares the 2016 performance of the students by population to all test takers in the city, which is DCPS and charter schools combined. As you see, almost every population outperforms the city average. In the case of black and low-income students, they outperform by at least five percentage points in English and in math. This is the result of years of quality instruction, not just one and not just one class. It starts with a strong pre-kindergarten program and continues through all grade levels. We attribute these scores to the dedicated teachers. And having been a teacher in both public district schools and public charter schools, I know firsthand the long hours that go into quality instruction. So I want to take a moment to thank the public charge school teachers for the results we saw this year. Well, okay. 
Looking just at our elementary and middle school results, which are grades three through eighth for English language arts, we saw a four percentage point improvement over previous year in the percent who are college ready or scoring four or five on PARC. Um, and much like you've heard on the state and at DCPS, this improvement was seen in virtually every population, with Latino students seeing the greatest improvement of 7% over last year. We saw this increase in every grade level for English language arts, with fourth and sixth grade seeing the largest gains. Math saw a more modest increase of two percentage points from the previous year uh, to 28% overall scoring out of four or five or career and college ready. Virtually all populations experienced this growth again. And um, grade level growth, however, was sporadic. Um, in third grade, we saw the largest increase of an eight percentage point increase over last year, but in sixth and eighth grade, we saw a decline. So that's something that we are looking into at the, as a sector to understand. Um, and now I'd like to turn this over to our vice board chair, Don Seufer, to talk about some schools in particular. If I could uh, just wrap this up by talking about some, some specifics that I could. We are exceptionally proud of the public charter middle and elementary schools that had high numbers of students meet or exceed the college-ready benchmark scoring a four or five in English language arts or math. These schools are located in every ward of the city that has charter schools, and students from every ward of the city attend these schools through the open enrollment process. We're equally excited about the schools that showed more than five percentage points of improvement between last year and this, while all of the public charter schools have a way to go before every student is college ready. It's nice to see students moving in the right direction so quickly. Um, so now we'll talk a minute about high school. Um, so our high school English results overall, citywide, we saw one percentage point increase. Um, so 24% of the students attending public charter schools who took the park scored a four or five and, that, and are on track for college or career. Um, gains occurred across virtually all student populations with Latino students and those who are English language learners seeing the largest gains. This was welcome improvement seeing where English language learners were just one year ago. Citywide um, char public charter schools experienced a four percentage point gain in math. This growth occurred in virtually all student populations yet again. And I will now turn over to Don to end the um, presentation. Speaking of high schools, we are proud of the four citywide public charter school high schools with, uh, with above average, with the, uh, that scored above city averages in both English and math. Thrilled for the opportunity to be here in one of the great high schools in America and equally thrilled that one of our citywide high school's basis uh, had, had uh, very similar results. It couldn't be more proud. We we're, we're, uh, couldn't be more proud of the schools that showed more than five percentage points increase over the previous year. For citywide public charter schools, this assessment is just one piece, and this is important, of a performance management framework um, that will be included in our school report cards that will be in, announced in, in November um, for every pub public charter school. Uh, as you know, we will tier our schools in uh, tier one, two, or three, and there will be a range of factors, some of which um, we know, and some of which, like longitudinal growth over time of individual students and re-enrollment re re rates, are some of the important factors that we built the performance management framework to, to, to evaluate our schools on. Education is, is not easy. It's not simple, and there's no formula. But we're so proud of the teachers, of the students, of the parents, of the school leaders who worked so hard to get to today, um, who we are here to celebrate. And we know that while we do have a way to go before all students in the city can, can uh, measure up to, to the level of college and career ready, because of the hard work and the commitment to education, for more than a decade, public charter schools have performed at or better than citywide averages and have shown, shown strong student growth. Thank you.
Great. Um, thanks to everybody, and we will open it up to some questions. I, don't, I think we start with the um, press. And so if you don't mind telling us who you are and where, who you're writing with. Yes. Me, uh, yeah. We can get you to part. Sorry, we can get you to participation rates. Uh, what we saw in a lot of cases were students not completing the entire exam. Uh, we had a number of parents, over a hundred parents, who wrote into us who said, "Can my kid be opted out of the exam because they're also preparing for AP exams?" And so there was a lot of noise around uh, the both Wilson and Walls. But we can get you that participation rate data. Do you have any indication? I know throughout the country there were a few instances of um, protests. Um, we, didn't, we, we didn't hear any, I mean, nobody wrote into us and said, I just think the park is dumb and I don't think my kids should take it. Most of it was really just around scheduling issues. During the same week, roughly. Um, yeah. Not choose between, no, but there might have been instances where they had to take both on the same day or even just taking both in the same week is a challenge, right? So um, I think one of the things that we are mindful of is we have a, a testing window and we can schedule testing differently so that kids are not experiencing the same thing at the same time and getting study fatigue or test fatigue. And just to follow that and maybe charter school and also, I imagine they were similar at this school and basis kids with AP tests, same conflicts, why did, why did that only seem to occur at Wilson? Yeah, I mean, I think, first of all, Wilson is a much larger school. Um, Walls is not as large, but still large, and trying to coordinate all of this stuff is not really simple, right? And so I think in some cases we were able to get it right, in other cases we were not. We have been trying to figure out, for example, how to make sure that kids are only taking exams in courses that they take, right? Because that makes sense. Lots of times kids have to take exams for a test that they took a year ago or two years ago. And we had some confusion this year around ensuring that every kid took a test in high school and every kid only taking a test in the course that they uh, were uh, taking an exam in the course that they were in and we just didn't get it right. Mayor, the Chancellor, moving forward, up to Chancellor, you're leaving soon. Um, Mayor, you're coming in the process of selecting some the, to succeed the Chancellor. Have these test scores made you think differently about who could come next or what changes might be made in the way this DCPS is managed and run? I mean, do you think, does this tell you things have to go in a very different direction or just kind of steady course in the same direction as we've gone in the past? Well, I think overall uh, we've seen uh, the, the scores move in the right direction. So if you're asking me, do we want to continue to move in the right direction, the answer is yes, obviously. Um, do we see some things that, that have to be improved in the specific schools? And I think the chancellor was very eloquent in laying out what we saw as the problems and some pretty practical things that can, can be done to address those problems. I think in the cases that were mentioned, what's important uh, to note as well is that the children are performing well in their AP classes. They're performing well in their SAT classes. So it would make these re results appear to be the outlier. Um, so we want uh, the teachers to stay focused on making sure the children are, are learning uh, these subject areas. Um, and we want the administration of these schools to focus on making sure they're creating an environment around testing uh, where their kids can be successful. Just a quick follow-up to the Chancellor of this one. You, in the past, you've used a clever kind of metaphor to explain or describe kind of where, where things are right now and where you want students to be when it comes to the testing. If you could just use that right now, just because I think that does a good job of uh, exemplifying. Yeah, this is what happens when you say it in a press briefing and whatever. So, you know, I think the, the metaphor that I use is about being in a barnyard, right, where if you are a crow, right, 
you think you're flying high because you're in a barnyard full of turkeys, right? But there are eagles who are soaring way above, and that's where we need to get to. And so even the progress that we're making, we've got to shoot even higher for what we want our kids to accomplish. And what I don't want to get lost here, because one or two schools didn't achieve the way we expected, is that 50% of our schools did, and they are growing. And we'll continue to have results, not just the park. We always say our kids are not one test school. But we'll have the NAEP this spring, right, which will tell us more information. We have AP scores. We have SAT scores. And so what I need people to understand is, do we want to be soaring with the Eagles? Yes. Are we happy that we're crows right now? No. But we will continue to push, and a number of our schools are actually making it work. If you saw the example that Principal Kang, uh, that Superintendent Kang laid forth, or if any of you has a kid in DCPS or a public charter school, and you see the level of homework that your kid is bringing home now, you tell me that you can ace these park exams and you can come <laughs> on and do it. But what my teachers and what my students are doing is they are taking students and families that have been misserved and disserved and have been super far behind, holding them to a very high standard, and actually beginning to meet those standards for the first time. If we had come to you where our scores were off the chain, you would tell us we were cheaters, right? But when we show you slow, steady progress, you say it's not fast enough. Well, it can't be both, right? And what I'm here to say is I'm proud of our charter schools. I'm proud of our D.C. public schools. We will continue to push. I'll say one more thing. When you look at our CAST scores, right, in 2007, sorry, 2006, right, we're at 23% kids achieving on the CAST, right? By 2000, whatever it was when we stopped the CAST, uh, right, we were at about 50% of our kids, right? Slow and steady progress wins the race. And I think as we learn this new test, as our teachers get accustomed to teaching in a very different way, I'm really encouraged, Martin. I actually think that when I walk out the door, the scores are going to soar. <laughs> <laughs> because our teachers and our families understand the new set of expectations and can continue to deliver for our kids. Uh, on that point, I looked up the, the, uh, the results and it says that it used to be half the states did the park testing, and now it's down to like seven states. How important are these results, not internally, which you just described, but to, to colleges and universities and to employers if very few people are actually taking this test, why do they care? Yeah, so I think there are actually a number of benefits to the park assessment. Um, so for, first, for D.C. as a pretty small jurisdiction, this is a very high-quality test that would be incredibly expensive for us to develop on our own. But by participating in a consortium with other states, it makes it much more cost reasonable for us um, to provide this high-quality test and to be able to release items each year that help our educators and our parents see what the bar is and, and how to meet it in the future. Um, the second thing is that while there are fewer states participating fully in park. We also have a number of additional jurisdictions that are choosing to use or license content. So Louisiana, for example, is licensing content from the park test and incorporating it into their state assessment. The Bureau of Indian Education and the Department of Defense Education Authority have adopted park and are using it as well. So we're seeing usage expand just in different ways than before. I have a follow-up, which is a totally different question to a different person. Mayor, I think you have a meeting tonight with the community about the search for a new chancellor. Uh, what are you expecting? I've forgotten where it is, but what are you expecting and how many people do you want to come? What are you expecting from those community meetings? Isn't just your staff going to make that decision? Well, the, the deputy mayor is convening uh, a meeting. I call it the DCPS check-in, and we, I think it's a good point to check in with communities uh, so that they are talking to us about qualities they want to see in DCPS leadership moving forward. Uh, we have had steady leadership at DCPS since 2007. Uh, when I go around the country, people are envious of the long tenure that we have had to focus um, with one system, 
curriculum, on vision, on school reform. And I think that has uh, brought us a very, very long way. Uh, so now we want to go out to the community, talk to them about where we've been um, and what we see as the challenges moving forward. We want as many people to come. We're going to be at the brand new Theodore Roosevelt High School. There are two additional forums scheduled uh, that the deputy mayor uh, can tell you about as well. For people who have participated in my budget engagement forums, there's something like that uh, where we're actually going to ask you for feedback uh, in a way that you can see how tough the decisions are uh, that the chancellor has to make and that the public charter school leaders have to make each and every day about resources, about focus, and the like. So um, that's what we're doing. We're checking in with neighborhoods. No matter where you live, you can come to any of the three meetings. I, I believe it was your quote last year, you called the first year results sobering. You still have just about one quarter of the students on track, and I don't mean to be one of those people who says, no, you're no, not moving no. fast enough, but no, no. what do you say to parents who say, you're not moving fast enough, and is this still sobering results? Again, um, so I think it was sobering last year because we had no idea what was going to happen, right? We, it was a new test. We didn't know what these standards were like. We were preparing our teachers for the unknown. Now we know what it is. And I feel like what we've established at DCPS is a track record for focusing on a few things and doing them really well and delivering results. So what I have to say to parents is we moved kids tremendously on the CAS. We can move kids tremendously on the park. We increased enrollment when nobody thought we would increase enrollment. We continue to increase graduation rates when, we didn't, when nobody thought we could increase graduation rates. So I think... What I'm most proud of as I walk out of this role is we have a system. It used to be that a problem would bedevil us and lay us flat. And now we actually have systems in place where we can support our people as they reach towards higher goals. I would say to parents and... I, I mean, I actually feel like I don't have to say this to parents, but parents are with us. Parents want DCPS to be strong. Parents are throwing in with us. The only way a traditional public school system can be great is when we have the engagement and support of parents. Parents are demanding things of us that they never demanded before because they didn't think that we could deliver. And so I think if we continue this level of engagement, I think if we continue to demonstrate that we are responsive and can continue to meet high standards, I think that parents will continue to choose DCPS and will continue to see the kind of results that they want. A quick follow-up. Yeah. Either you or the superintendent. In, in terms of some of these schools that are seeing dramatic increases yep. in accomplishment, um, if I'm in one of those schools that doesn't have that, I'm saying, what are your teachers Absolutely. doing and get them over here? What's going on? We're going to get them over here, right? Every high school in D.C. should come and see what Bannerka did to move that kind of, to make that kind of progress. That being said, every school is very different, right? I see the principal of Ketchum in the audience where some significant portion of her kids are homeless, right? Yet and still, she's posting big results in, in both English language arts and in math. What it takes to move kids at Ketchum is very different than what it takes to move kids at Raymond or at Banneker. And so we want to take best practices, but we also want to make sure that we're able to recognize the context that we're in because not every school is the same. And I would just add that I know that on behalf of the charter schools and DCPS, when every principal gets that, they look around and say, who did a fantastic job? What's their phone number? <clears throat> regardless of sector, regardless of, um, and so we really have a different tenor, I think, in DC um, around going for excellence across the board, across our two sectors, than perhaps some other cities do. Yeah, sorry, again. Um, so we have two high schools in DCPS that have 0% of kids um, reading proficiently considered based on this test. And I know those are alternative high schools. Um, how concerning is that? What is that what does that say? I know we have put in resources to these alternatives that are coming yep. out of 
Yeah, I think, I mean, this is the first year, the first school year that we've made investments in our alternative schools. And I've said before, you know, when you are trying to rebuild an entire system, you can't do everything at once. So I expect that the investments that we made this year will begin to see payoffs. Again, our alternative young, our, our young people in our, our in our alternative schools have been some of the least served students uh, by our school system. We failed them in their traditional school. And I say we failed them. I didn't say they failed. We failed them in traditional schools. And so it's incumbent upon us as adults to find different ways to get them to the same standard. And I want to take off my hat. We have some of our best educators in our alternative schools who are willing to do it in a completely different way. And so I think now that they have exposure to these exams and now that we actually have a very different approach to professional development, our LEAP program, where teachers are getting content-based professional development on a weekly basis. Teachers will have many more opportunities to develop and improve their practice at a much quicker pace than we have before, and I expect you to see improving results in our alternative schools. So we have 74 test takers who are white in high school and about 700 in the 3 through 8th grade. Fewer white students than we had special ed or English language learners. Um, we don't know yet. We look at this as one component of school quality, right? So we're looking at, the, at how our white students did on this. We're going to look at how they do individually on the growth percentile. We'll look at their attendance, their re-enrollment, and we'll see if there's any pattern there that we can determine um, might be going on. We do that with every subgroup, no matter if it's a positive or, or a negative. Um, so for us, as you've heard, we can trace a significant problem with our white student decline to a couple of high schools. Um, that being said, I'm the chancellor of all students, right? And so we have a commitment to making sure that if our white students are struggling, that we find a way to meet their needs. I actually don't necessarily believe that our white students are struggling. I believe that a lot of it, I'm not, I'm, we have white students who struggle. I'm not saying that at all. Let me be very clear. Um, but I actually think a lot of the data is, comes out of some of these issues that we raised around a couple of the high schools. So um, I'm confident that we can get it back. Martin, right on. Uh, so, Chancellor, you mentioned that uh, basically starting this, uh, I guess the school year would be, that high stakes, uh, when the high stakes concept returns, and now teachers and principals are going to be held accountable for the scores that the schools that they're in produce. Yes. Is that right? And how do you communicate that to teachers? I mean, is it just, they know this is coming up, right? Yeah, absolutely. So two years ago when we started the park, what we said, much to the consternation of people who thought we were sliding back on teacher evaluation, was this is an exam that we don't know anything about. And we don't want our teachers to worry about their jobs or we don't want our principals to worry about their jobs as we embark upon a completely different examination. And you know, if I had to go back and do it again, I would make the same decision. It was the reasonable right thing for us to do. And in not getting the exam results until December, we didn't have a lot of time between year one and year two to make a lot of the changes that we wanted to make or that we could learn from the data. So we said for year two, we thought it made sense as well. But when we made that decision in year two, we also made it very clear that in year three, which this spring is the third year to park, we would actually reinstitute the use of park scores at both teacher evaluation and in the principal evaluations. So we've communicated it all along. 
We've let teachers and principals know as they are setting their goals for this year. We sit down with every single principal at the beginning of the year and set goals. One of their goals will be a park goal or a couple of their goals will be park goals. So people know this is coming. Um, and I think we've had the appropriate two years of time to try to work out the kinks. And now we've got to hold ourselves accountable. When we started holding ourselves accountable to student achievement, we saw student achievement move across D.C. public schools. And so we want to continue to see that kind of movement. I want to thank everybody, but take, because I have a um, captured audience um, in a sense, tonight at Roosevelt High School, we have our chancellor search, as was mentioned, 6.30 p.m. Everybody is welcome. September 7th, we have our next one at Eastern High School and September 14th at Savoy Elementary School. Thank you all for coming and have a wonderful day.